Do you recall taking a photograph with your phone of Mr. Onfoy after he was shot and seated in his vehicle? Yes. Why did you do that? Because I was a big fan of his and I was photo, remember that forever. Did that photograph the trial still continues with the three men that murdered X. So the guy that took pictures of X's last moments after he passed away, pretty much, is on the stand in this video. And it's, I may say, it's a little disturbing to hear this guy talk about why he took pictures. Just being baffled that there were pictures of X's body online and this is the guy that did it. So the guy's really strange. So just prepare yourself. His energy's off for sure. Um, I don't know if he's nervous or whatever, but he's a weirdo. So let's get into it, boys. So this is someone that Dedrick Williams, the getaway driver, is close with, and she helped rent the car that they used that day. Did you call him by anything? Chucky. Chucky. You know, he's probably mad as hell. This man's nickname was Chucky. I know I look like Chucky, but whatever, dude. Did he touch you? Yes. Did he mention anything about a homicide? No. Did he mention anything about a robbery? No. The call came from Big Rock's home, but it was both right on the phone. How do you know that? <coughs> they both found the way. And you knew their voices? Yes. All right. And what did Bullwright tell you while he called you? That the guy put This girl is a close friend of all the people that robbed X and killed him. And she's explaining how she rented a car for them in her name on Turo. Went to work that day, didn't hear anything from anyone about no murder, robbery or anything. But I find it hard to believe that she has no idea that these guys are just out to rob people. She's acting like she had no idea about their motives to rent a car. Then why are you renting the car for them? Like, I feel like that's not true. But it'd be really stupid to rent a car in your name that you know is going to go out and rob people. So I don't know. So the conversation was who was going to be responsible for the damages? And at some point, does everyone hand you money? Yes. Describe the money that you saw in their hands. $100 denominations on Christie Bills. How much money did they give you? So when they crashed the car after they killed X, they had to give her $1,000 just for the damages because it's a rental. So stupid. Clearly, it's going to be reported on insurance. There's no point. Oh. Were you with him the day he was arrested? Yes. She was close to these boys. She was with him the day he got arrested, the days before. Like, damn. I find it hard to believe she did not know they were out robbing people. You were in a relationship with someone? Yes. Who were you in a relationship with? Diedrich Williams. So now this is Diedrich's girlfriend. Yikes. 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 Where did Where did Diedrich Williams tell you that he was earlier that day? Um, he told me he went to Reba. Did he tell you why he went to Reba? To get parts for his bike. And did you later learn that he was present during a shooting that occurred taking the life of Jose on Yes, ma'am. Diedrich Williams actually told you that he was present during the robbery and the homicide of Jose on Did he not? Yes, ma'am. He told you that he witnessed it. Yes. Correct? And did he also tell you that they, uh, that he believed that it wasn't supposed to go down like that or something to that effect. Yes, ma'am. And that he knew who the shooter was. Yes. Personally. Did he tell you that he also saw the robbery occur by the shooter and another gunman, correct? Yes, ma'am. And he told you he knew them personally? Yes. Did he ever tell you that the shooting of Jocelyn Onfoy had anything to do with Drake? No, ma'am. During any time in your relationship, Dietrich Williams never mentioned anything about Drake? No, ma'am. About Migos? No. About any Toronto connections? No. Joe Budden? Did he mention any of those people? No. Joe Budden? I forgot one of the lawyers got Joe Bunn involved in this too. Bro, they were reaching so hard for anyone, bro. His own girlfriend, Loki, kind of snitched on him right now, but. He told you he knew why it happened and that he was there, correct? Yes. So he did ask you to change your testimony? Yes. Well, not necessarily change it because it was never stated from the ego. It was never stated that way. He wanted you to say that he was not the driver, correct? Okay. You need a break? Yes. <laughs> Sign up, please. Diedrich is beyond screwed. Like that man was on camera at the crime scene going inside. And now his girlfriend and his best friend both admitting that they know he was involved in the crime. Trayvon, there's zero phone records of him being there. It's basically just witness testimony that's getting him there at the crime scene and just people snitching on him. The gunman that actually shot X, his phone was tracked. So they're screwed. It came up via your suggestion or his suggestion, his being Chucky, that you should or there was an implication that you should write an affidavit clearing up some things. Do you remember that? Mm -hmm. What he wanted you to do was to write an affidavit saying that he was not the driver as part of this homicide, correct? Correct. Did he ask you to complete that affidavit? Yes. So Diedrich was desperate in jail and told his girlfriend to go tell them that she, he wasn't actually the driver when he was. <laughs> That's pretty much what that sounds like. Kind of just stating the obvious of what they already know about him just being present there and admitting that he knows what happened. But she's not like saying specific details about the cash or the shooters. So this is Diedrich's attorney about to come up and cross-examine. And you've testified that he did have a bank account, correct? Correct. So he was the type of person that would basically squirrel all his cash and keep it on, correct? Correct. So for him to have $15,000 cash would not be out of the ordinary. Like I said, it depends on the time of his life. Bragging with cash is something that Diedrich did often. Would you agree with me? Yes. Um, 
the hell is, that is this? That, um, you recognize from Dietrich's social media? Yes. And it's the, the equipment that he's wearing, is that equipment that he would normally wear to ride your phone? Yes. You would agree that in the photo alone, uh, Mr. Williams has various size friends, correct? Okay. There's some people that are tall in the photo. Yes. There's some people that are short. Yes. And in relation to Mr. Williams, you would agree that there are multiple individuals that are significantly taller than him. So all the defense lawyers are basically trying to say that there's other people that Diedrich knows that could have been there that day that they haven't investigated. They're trying to get the attention away from their client, even though there's people that have testified saying that they were there before the crime with the rental car and after the crime with the money that they stole. Usually when you're flexing a lot of money like these guys were, it's because they stole it themselves. So this is the guy that took a picture of Axe and shit. What the fuck, dude? All right, he looks like a villain from like a superhero movie or something. You have to wait for me to ask a question. Yes, ma'am. And also, you have to wait um, just that both of us don't talk at the same time. We were just going to check our bikes. I wanted to check our bikes. That's what we did. So we stopped by, looked around. I'm not the type of guy to usually judge people, but bro, what's going on here with this? What is the hairstyle choice? If he had just better hair, he'd look way better. D triple X there that day? At the end when I walked out. Okay, so let's talk about that. That's what I'm referring to. Yeah. So when you say at the end when you walked out, tell us what you were doing and when did you see him? He said on the four-wheeler and just came out of the store, walking towards the vehicle. You actually asked him for a picture? Yeah. Tell us what you said. I'm like, hey, X, can you get a photo? And what did he say? Good morning. Nice car. He's not in a good mood. You can tell by the way he came out of the door. He just slammed it. You said X was not in a good mood. You could tell by the way he slammed the door. Interesting. Do you remember what the race was of the person? Black. Okay. What if anything This guy seems a little strange, bro. It's throwing me off. Sorry. Happened next after you said you know him as X. Did you even know his real name? Yes. Okay, so what happened when Mr. Onfroy was walking out? Don't understand the question. Did you actually see him get into his car? Yes. So tell me about that. What happened oh. after Mr. Onfroy got into his car? He backed out, drove around the parking lot. Me and my Layla just looked at him, drove around, and that's when we got to the stop. I was entering my vehicle. My girl was on the other side of the passenger side, so she wasn't able to see it. Because that's why, look, 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 they're robbing him, they're robbing him. And that's when I, the van is long, so that's when I went, I went to look him. Okay. Did you actually see the actual robbery and homicide occur? Yes. Tell us what you saw. Two guys jump out and started robbing him. What was the physical description of the two, you said guys, of the two males that got out? One guy was talking, guy Remember, you have to let me finish my question and then wait. He keeps cutting off the prosecutor, bro. It's probably, he's probably a little nervous, but. Then Sorry. you answer. Okay. What was the physical description of the two males that got out to rob the victim? One was talking to the other one. Hands up each other inside the car, scuffling them around. Okay. So when you say fighting, were they fighting Mr. Onfoy, who was in the car? Yes. Uh, Triple X also noticed Mr. Jose Onfoy was shot. Yes. I just backed up and bam. Now, when you say the guy, which one? The taller one? Taller, which, taller. Let me finish my question. Are you a little bit nervous today? Yes. Okay. Do you recall taking a photograph with your phone of Mr. Onfoy after he was shot and seated in his vehicle? Yes. Why did you do that? Because I was a big fan of his. I wanted to have a photo. Remember that forever. Did that photograph, did you then upload it? It was Snapchat, yes. You're forgetting our rules already. I need to ask the whole question. Bro, he keeps interrupting her, and he's a fucking weirdo. He wanted to remember that forever. What? Not really an appropriate time to post something on Snapchat, you fucking weirdo. <laughs> that you uploaded it to social media after you took a picture of the victim shot in the driver's seat. Yes. Why did you do that? Because I don't have a photo of him on my phone, so my favorite position, and he just died in front of me. You realize now that that was in poor taste, correct? I don't know what that word means. You realize now that that was not a good idea, that you were not supposed to do that, correct? Yes. What is going on here, dude? This guy is strange. At any point, you receive compensation for the photograph that you took of Mr. Onfroy in that position as he lay dying. FBI, FBI, take care of all of this. I took my phone in. FBI. That's not what I asked you. Listen to my question. Did you receive compensation, money, for the photograph that you took of Mr. Onfroy that day? No. I didn't see what was up with him. I ran to the car to see how he was. He was oh. dead. That's a photo. Okay, so you rendered first aid? He was dead, then I took a photo. Like that sentence, bro. I went up to see how he was, and he was dead, so then I took a photo. Like, that is an insane sentence. Are you, I understand that you're nervous. Are you sober right now? Of course. Okay. Um, I'm trying to see if he's okay. He just got shot. How were you trying to see if he was okay? What did you do to see if he was okay? I think him out from the seat, checking if he was all right. He's okay. So you moved him in the seat. Was the seat pulled back? I put him up just a little bit up. Ran up to the car, to the seat, checked on him. Shook his shoulders? Just looked at my hands on him. See if okay. I saw the bullet wounds. Okay, that's when you saw him like that. Okay. Yes, sir. And that's when you, you didn't take any, is your testimony today that you didn't take any video of Mr. Onford? I can't recall him for the photo or the video. It was a photo, but I can't recall if it's in the video also. And, and actually, it went viral, right? <sighs> 
Oh man, that guy is very strange, dude. He's a little weirdo. He said he went up to X immediately after he got shot, checked on him, made it, looked at his wounds and everything, and took pictures. Like pretty much zero effort in trying to help. You could put pressure on the wound or something, but whatever, dude. Oh, so disturbing to hear that. I'm gonna keep covering this trial. If you're new to my channel, subscribe. I'm gonna turn Fucking love you, boys. Peace.